Hey everyone, and welcome to Skillcap's guide on the best graphics, sound, and interface settings for World of Warcraft PvP to give you a competitive edge on your opponents. By the end of this guide, you'll have WoW set up perfectly to ensure that you can see, hear, and control everything in the way pros do. And these settings are not just one person's opinion. We've spent countless hours researching the best pro player settings and consulted with the top players in the game to make sure the information you're about to receive is the most up-to-date and accurate as possible. Trust me. We promise you that there are some hidden settings you've never even heard of before that will give you a competitive edge. Now, we here at Skillcapped release plenty of premium content every week to keep you up to date with the meta and make you a better player. So, if you want to improve at WoW and take your game to the next level, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified the moment we release more premium guides just like this one. And if you're hyped for this one, let's try to get it to 2000 likes. Alright, enough building up. Let's jump straight into it. Starting off with your graphic settings, there are surprise Surprisingly, a few settings in here that are vital for PvP. First, you'll want to make sure projected textures are enabled. Without this setting, you'll be unable to see parts or in some cases entire spells which appear directly on the environment. We also suggest having your texture resolution set to at least fair to make these projected textures clearer. You can clearly see here the difference between these settings and why you may struggle to see certain things if you don't use these settings. Another super important setting is particle density, which you'll want to have at least set to good. Having this setting too low can make it impossible to see some of the most important important spells in the game. For example, having this set incorrectly will make it impossible to see smoke bomb, so make sure you've got this enabled. Beyond these settings, if you find yourself struggling with low FPS, the best settings to lower are view distance and shadow quality. Next up, we're taking a look at sound. Through our research, we were shocked at how many inexperienced players we found were not utilizing sound to their advantage in WoW PvP. From interrupts to stuns, having sound enabled lets you hear when some of the most crucial spells your opponents have are used. To make it easier for you to hear, you'll want to enable sound and then manually increase it while lowering music, ambience, and dialogue. You should also disable error speech to prevent hearing unnecessary audio files whenever you spam abilities that can't be used yet. Having your audio settings like this means you'll easily be able to hear when you've faked the mage's interrupt, grounded the paladin's hammer of justice, parried a rogue's kidney shot, and so much more. Next, we're going to go through the interface settings to make sure you've got everything set up correctly to both increase the control over your character and improve your awareness. Starting with the control settings, the big one here is sticky targeting. Enabling this simply prevents you from detargeting your target if you click on the ground. While this may not seem important, it's entirely possible for you to be faced with this situation. For example, when utilizing double mouse click to move, an accidental left click on the ground will cause you to lose your target. Among other potential scenarios, it's just a safe bet to have this enabled. Moving down into combat, there are a handful of settings which help with both control over your character and awareness of what's happening in the game. First, you'll want to make sure target of target is enabled. This setting is vital for figuring out who a target might be casting into. We say might because you can usually only rely on this information for damage dealing spells as crowd control is generally cast onto a focused target or with an arena 1-2-3 macro. Still though, you can rely on target of target casts to figure out who an incoming lava burst or chaos bolt might be going into. Next, loss of control alerts is a big one. This makes it significantly easier to see exactly what crowd control has been used on you and how long it's up for, ultimately helping you with your awareness. Many years ago, players actually used an add-on for this, but since Blizzard built it into the default UI, that's no longer necessary and you'll just need to enable this setting. While both the target of target and loss of control alert settings help with improving your awareness, the next few settings assist with control over your character. First, make sure both focus cast and self cast key are set to none. This is something we'll touch on in a future video, but you basically want these settings to prevent issues with key binding later on. The last setting you'll want here is to enable auto self cast. This helps prevent the need to create macros to use abilities on yourself while targeting enemy players. For example, having Blessing of Freedom bound without a self-cast macro will allow you to automatically freedom yourself while targeting an enemy if you have auto self-cast enabled. There's just one major downside we need to mention here though, and that's when playing with a priest on your team. This is because if a priest uses mind control on your target as you attempt to utilize the auto self-cast, you'll actually cast your spell on the enemy team. So just be aware of this issue if you're against making self-cast macros. 
Next up, the only important setting in display is status text, which you'll want to set as either numeric value or both. By usually comparing their health stat to yours, you'll usually know who outgears who. And percentage helps with knowing when a target will drop into execute range, which can be important for some classes, especially those who get a damage increase on an ability, as opposed to straight up access to an execute like warriors. Social settings aren't too important, but if you're looking for some recommended settings, you can follow these. The only one worth mentioning here is display only character achievements to others, which sort of lets you play in an incognito mode by preventing the character with that setting from being linked to the other characters on your account via achievements. Next, in the action bar settings, we suggest enabling both the bottom left and right bar, and then only enabling the right bar and right bar 2 if needed. With that being said, we'll be discussing this in future detail in our key binding guide, which will cover the entire process on how to correctly set up your action bars and key binds from start to finish. So for now, just make sure you've got show numbers for cooldowns enabled. Doing so helps you see exactly how long you have left on the cooldown of your abilities. This one is really tough to play without, and much like the loss of control alerts from earlier, there used to be an add-on for this one too, but being part of the default UI now means enabling this setting is enough. Moving on to the name settings, there are quite a few important ones here that both help with control and awareness. First, you'll want to make sure you enable Always Show Nameplates. These are vital for seeing exactly who is positioned where, and so you should want to have them on all the time. We then suggest enabling larger nameplates. Although this can be seen as personal preference, having these larger makes it easier to click on them when needed. And speaking of clicking on nameplates, you have a choice to make with a nameplate motion type which can impact how easy it is to click on nameplates in some scenarios. Overlapping makes nameplates a more accurate source of information on the exact position of your enemies as they'll be positioned where enemies actually are. However, it can make it tricky to quickly click on an important nameplate when enemies are stacked and moving around. Alternatively, stacking nameplates will make it easier to quickly click on a specific nameplate when enemies are stacked. And there are some scenarios in which you need to be able to quickly click on a nameplate. For example, being able to instantly click on a grounding totem to kill it the moment it's used. Now, while overlapping nameplates is better in practice, and we do recommend using it, if you find yourself having a hard time quickly clicking on important nameplates when enemies are stacked, feel free to try out stacking nameplates and see if it works better for you. Next, you'll also want to make sure nameplates are actually enabled for the right targets. By enabling enemy units, which lets you see enemy player frames, and minions to see the aforementioned totems along with pets. Minor enemies can then be set based on personal preference. Just note that it can be annoying to have this enabled when playing against demonology warlocks because of the number of imps. And friendly players is an option mostly useful for healers as it gives them an easier time seeing exactly where their teammates are and what their health is. Last up in names, we have an optional and personal preference setting, the personal resource display. This can make it easier for you to see resources like combo points and holy power while also making it easier to see your health health and mana. However, it does duplicate information that can be found on other nearby frames and so it isn't necessarily recommended but can be used if you're more comfortable with it. Next, the camera settings comes with one extremely important option that impacts how you can control your character in such a way that it increases your awareness. This might sound strange but having your camera following style set to never adjust camera allows you to move forward or strafe in one direction while facing your camera in the opposite direction, allowing you to see things you otherwise wouldn't be able to see. Being able to do this allows you to see exactly where your enemies are positioned, even when moving away from them. An excellent use case for this is when facing a resto druid as a rogue, you can make it seem like you're moving away from the druid to get them out of bear form and then instantly shadow step and kidney shot the moment you see them leave bear form. Without this setting, it's impossible to look in the opposite direction that you're moving in without your camera resetting back behind you, which hinders your ability to gather information around you. Moving on to the mouse settings, although you can enable mouse sensitivity and adjust it here, it's usually better to pick up a gaming mouse and adjust the DPI in your gaming mouse's software. The only setting that's worth playing around with here is the mouse look speed, which you'll need to have at a comfortable point that makes it easy for you to quickly and accurately rotate your camera when needed. Last up, we have the raid profile settings. Many players often mistake these for being an add-on, but they are in fact a part of the default UI. Start by enabling use raid style party frames. Now these are honestly the best frames around, and by enabling this setting, you make it significantly easier to see your teammates' health, mana, buffs, and debuffs. 
we then highly recommend having the sort by option set to group. You should then make use of a script to make sure your frame is always last which makes it easier to use party 1 and party 2 macros without worrying about who is the group leader. Without this script, you might find yourself accidentally using party macros on the wrong target if you're used to the top player being party 1 and the second being party 2 as your frames won't always represent this order without using these settings. We've got the script linked in the description as an add-on so be sure to download it to get everything set up correctly. As for the actual display settings of your RAID frames, we recommend going with these settings which have you enable everything except for display border and the more important display only dispellable debuffs. Having this enabled will prevent you from seeing important buffs such as crowd control in your healer, so make sure to keep it disabled. With that being said, we will be looking into debuffs more closely in our follow-up add-on video, so don't worry too much about this for now. The last raid profile setting you want to adjust is to maximize the frame height and width. Although you can play around with this to find what you prefer, maximizing it is recommended to make it easier to see everything, something that will again be important in our follow-up video when we start to include add-ons. Now that we've got the best system and interface settings, it's time to take a look at the best practices for setting up your frames. Before we do anything though, you'll want to head back into system and then graphics in order to pick up an optimal UI scale as you'll need to reposition all of your frames once you've got the UI scale you want. So what does the UI scale do? Well, it allows you to increase the size of all frames, most importantly your unit frames, buff frame, and action bars. Doing so makes it easier to see the information you need to see at a glance. We recommend going with a 9.0 UI scale on a standard 22 to 24 inch monitor with a 1920 by 1080 resolution. But you can feel free to set this to whatever feels good. The only thing that matters is that you can easily see things like buffs and debuffs on your frames. Really, the only thing you need to avoid here is having a low UI scale on a large monitor. That is definitely definitely a no-go as you will struggle to quickly get the information you need. After deciding on your UI scale, we're actually going to have you download the add-on Leatrix Plus. Now we did say our follow-up guide is going to be all about getting you set up with the best and most important add-ons for PvP. However, you'll want to grab Leatrix Plus early on for a handful of quality of life changes that prevent the need to use scripts, including having this add-on manage the position of most of your frames across all characters, meaning you'll only have to move them around once. After downloading Leatrix Plus, you'll want to type slash LTP and go into the frame setting. Here, you should enable Manage Frames, Manage Buffs, and Class Colored Frames. By enabling Manage Frames and Buffs, you'll be able to move your player and target frames along with your buffs and debuffs and have them automatically set in the exact same position on all your characters. Class Colored Frames is then a quality of life change that makes it easier to instantly see what class you're targeting. Feel free to also enable Hide Griffins to clean up your UI a little and open up some space on the bottom left for details another add-on that we'll cover in our add-on guide. Before reloading your UI, you can also go into system and enable max camera zoom. This is not really a setting for PvP but it can be useful to have set. Oh, and speaking of zoom distance, we generally recommend a zoom distance that's around 25 ticks from fully zoomed in for competitive PvP. You can set this zoom distance by zooming all the way in and then zooming out around 25 times. We also suggest not having zoom in and out bound to your scroll wheel as it is by default. However, this is something we go into in much more detail in our upcoming keybinding guide. You can of course play around with this, but we generally wouldn't recommend going too much closer or further away from 8 ticks to maximize the trade-off between how much of your surroundings you can see and the position of your vision. You can then go into Leatrix settings if you want to disable the minimap button. And with all the settings in Leatrix done, reload your UI to apply everything and then move on to the final and most important step, positioning your frames. Without a doubt, this section is going to include the most important lessons in this video. By this point, you should have already set your UI scale to one that you're comfortable with and are now ready to get your frames in the correct position which is vital for increasing your awareness. So what do we mean by the correct position? Well, let's start by breaking down what information each set of frames offers you. First, we have the player, target, and focus frames. While the player frame offers you information that you can more clearly see elsewhere, the target and focus frames are extremely important for seeing the buffs, debuffs, and cast bars of your opponents. And speaking of buffs and debuffs, a frame that's often neglected is your own buff frame, which obviously lets you see your own buffs and debuffs. Next, we've got the raid frames, which are extremely important for knowing the exact health of your teammates, along with important buffs and debuffs, including things like what crowd control they're sitting in. By this point, you should start to notice a pattern. Buffs and debuffs are important, more important than most people realize. And by having your UI scale too low and your frames positioned incorrectly, you're gonna have a really hard time getting the information you need with just a glance on your screen. With the UI scale and position of all frames set to default, 
we want you to follow along to try to identify exactly when the following things happen. When does our healer get crowd controlled so that we can react and get into defensive stance before being stunned? When do we get a trinket proc so that we can set up a kill with a lot of damage? When does hamstring fade from our target so that we can re-slow them? When does mortal strike come off cooldown so we don't mess up our rotation? The truth is, it's almost impossible to see exactly when all of these things happen while retaining a good overview of the game going on around you. And that's not even mentioning keeping an eye on arena frame cast bars, something we'll cover later. So what are you supposed to do about it? Well. So first things first, with your UI scale set to around 0.9, things are immediately better as frames become much larger, buffs and debuffs become easier to see, and everything just comes closer together. And that's the key closer together. You want to bring your frames inwards closer to your central field of view so that you're not forced to look to the top left, top right, and bottom of your screen to get constant updates on the information you need. As you can see here, we've brought down our player and target frame horizontally while bringing our focus and raid frames into a more central position, directly within our peripheral when looking at our character. We've also brought our buff frame down horizontally and slightly increased its scale further than what the 0.9 UI scale did. With all of these changes, you can see just how much easier it is to gather the information you need in an instant. Without even needing to look, we can see the exact health of our team, and an extremely short glance to the left lets us see the crowd control they're sitting in. A simple shift above our character and to the right lets us quickly and easily see our buffs and debuffs, and we can identify important ones like trinket procs in a fraction of a second. We can also see what our focus target is up to without needing to look away from what our character is doing. Also, glancing at our target frame to check on buffs and debuffs no longer prevents us from seeing our character. And the same applies to our action bars now that everything has been lowered. We can see exactly what's happening to our team even while checking on our cooldowns. Looking at the before and after side by side, it should be extremely clear just how much our awareness has improved with a few small tweaks to our UI. Now all of these changes we're showing you here aren't the be all end all for frame positioning. You can go with whatever feels comfortable, we're just providing you with the foundations of why you want frames to be repositioned, it's up to you exactly how you position them. You can see here how different pro players have their UI set up but ultimately all of them follow the guidelines we've shown you. Remember what your goals are. You want to make it as easy as possible to see everything without needing to constantly glance around the different parts of your screen. The last bit of your interface that you'll want to manage the position of are your arena frames. Now we mentioned earlier that you need to keep track of arena cast bars along with a few other things that a couple add-ons will help you achieve. We'll be covering this in further detail in our follow-up must-have PvP add-ons guide. But for now, a general rule of thumb is to position your arena frames horizontally across from your raid frames. Doing so lets you mirror what you achieve with bringing your raid frames into that horizontal position across from your character. Without even needing to look, you can see arena cast bars, and a quick glance lets you gather important information such as trinket cooldowns and diminishing returns. And for those of you wondering, we're using the add-on E-Align to get everything nice and symmetrical. Now before we move on, some of you may be a little overwhelmed at the number of things we're saying you need to be aware of. And that's okay. We've got an upcoming guide all about awareness that will help those of you who are struggling to figure out where and when you should be looking at certain parts of your screen and help overcome the dreaded state of tunnel visioning. Alright, before we leave you, there's actually one more setting we're gonna have you change. Remember at the start of the video when we promised there's some hidden settings you haven't heard of before? Well, this final tip is likely to be one of those. The custom lag tolerance or spell key window is a hidden setting in WoW which has a default value that is quite high for rated PvP, especially for melee. Start by typing in the command you see on the screen which is linked in the description. This will show you what your spell queue window is currently set to and will usually be the default value of 400. Without going into too much detail, this setting essentially changes the window in which you have to queue your next ability for. Although this is relatively high, it can be great for casters. It ultimately leads to less responsive gameplay, which can be a problem especially for casters with very interactive rotations. Assuming you have around 20 ms, we suggest going with a spell queue of 120 by using the command on the screen which will also be linked in the description. You can of course modify this number to get what feels best for you, but setting your spell queue window to around 100 ms higher than your latency feels like the perfect setting for most. And we promise you, once you've got the right spell queue window set, you'll find your gameplay becomes much more responsive and lets you react faster to whatever is happening in your games. Now, on the flip side, you may be wondering why you wouldn't want to have this set to zero for the absolute most responsive gameplay. And while that's a great question, the answer is simple. Without the ability to queue the next ability, you'll always find yourself leaving gaps in your rotation. This is illustrated best during a subtlety rogue's shadow dance. With your custom lag tolerance set to zero, you'll be unable to use three globals in between two cheap shots without leaving a gap. 
As you can see here, after Cheap Shot is used, we use Shadow Strike into Eviscerate and then a March for Death Eviscerate. Attempting to then follow up the first Cheap Shot with a second one leaves a gap in between the two Cheap Shots, which is obviously something you want to avoid at all costs. However, once we set the custom lag tolerance to be 100 ms higher than our latency, 120 in this case, we're able to easily execute the same rotation without leaving a gap in between the two Cheap Shots. Before we leave you, make sure you come back for our follow-up guide on the most important add-ons which will get you set up with everything the pros use to gain an edge over their opponents in competitive PvP. And guys, we here at Skillcapped put a ton of work into guys like these to make sure we provide you with the most up-to-date and accurate information you won't find anywhere else. So if you'd like to support the channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified the moment we release more premium guides just like this one. That's gonna do it for this one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.